Hey everyone, this is Nate and this is the Nader Tater Channel. Alright, let's do a speed test and see which third party gateway is the fastest on the T-Mobile network. Now, these are all gateways that um, can use a SIM card and connect and they give you either Wi-Fi or in the case of the VisiGig, it just gives you Ethernet actually. And um, I've tested many of these already. I've done a speed test. I did give the Invisigig a little bit of um, a unfair test because my T-Mobile network was not working well at the time. So it wasn't really a fair test. So I need to retest that. So that's what kind of spurred this on. Um, so this is the Invisigig um, gateway. And it's really designed to be simple and have mainly just the cellular modem in there with a ethernet port. There's no Wi-Fi capability on it. Uh, so it's designed to really hook up your own um, router to get um, to get signal. Um, so it's a nice unit. It is a kind of uh, expensive, but um, next we have this Chester Cheetah router. This one I've had um, for a while. It's actually uh, one of my beginner or first um, third party gateways. It's still been the fastest so far enough of the test. And um, it's you know kind of large and bulky, but the thing it just blazes fast. It does really good carrier aggregation, and it seems to um, be the fastest and have a lot of settings in there for band locking and uh, even tower or cell locking in there as well. Which these other ones um, have some of that as well. And this is the MoFi 5500. This one has the 9191. Uh, modem in it. I think they did actually come out with one now with the um, see RM520 uh, GL I think is the um, modem that is in both this Chester Cheetah and this Invisigig and I've heard rumors that that 521 is faster but it's still not as fast as the other ones but we're going to test it out and then down here at the end I have a Peplink. This is actually a really nice unit. It's a uh, really big enough my uh, transformer there is changing, but um, this is a business grade unit. It has lots of features built in really for business use, enterprise use, where you can do um, all the settings and uh, control in a local place in the cloud and update all your devices. Um, it has been fast with the 5G unit, and it does have some nice features I really like as far as um, WAN failover, where it can use Wi Fi as WAN, it can use um, the uh, WAN port on here can use USB, I believe. Actually, this one does not have the USB. The other Peplink does. Um, and then it has a dual SIM card. It only has one modem, so it can only use one SIM card at a time, but it can fill over on your SIM cards. Um, so I, I do like this unit. Um, it's just that it's really pricey. I think it's uh, $1,000 or more uh, for it. So it, it is uh, expensive, but it does have some really nice features. So let's test them out and see. Now I'm going to be using a T-Mobile Business 5G internet SIM card. And that one is not um, constrained by device. So it's by default a bring your own device plan. So I can literally take that SIM card and plug it into any of these without changing any, um, at least IMEI type settings. I might have to make sure that it uh, selects T-Mobile network and that the APN is set up correctly. But uh, I have videos on how to do that. But on at least these three units, the Peplink one, I don't think they have a way for you to um, repair or revise the IMEI. But these other ones you do. So uh, that's something you can look into in my channel if you want to see some more details there. But let's get into the speed testing and just see how they do compare. All right. So I am hooked up to the Invisigig. You can tell that by looking in the top right corner of my tablet. You can see a little Ethernet sign instead of a Wi-Fi sign. So I'm plugged in directly to it from my tablet with a USB to Ethernet adapter. And you can see that I am um, connected to T-Mobile, which you'd expect with the T-Mobile SIM in there. And we're doing a speed test up here to see what kind of speeds we get. All right, the other thing to also look at is the ping. So we'll look at that as well and see what it looks like we're around a second for loaded pings, even though the unload is very good. All right, and we'll just do another test just to kind of get a kind of running average, see if anything changes. All right, looks like very similar numbers there um, between those two. So let's move on to the next device. All right, so now I'm connected to my T-Mobile gateway that's provided to me. This is with the Sagemcom 5, 6, 
888W unit and we'll do a test with it in the same location. All right, we'll do one more test just again to check to see how consistent it is. See this time around it did get a lot faster. So that's why sometimes I'll check them twice just to kind of see. All right, there we go. All right, so now we are on the uh, Peplink Max BR1 and we will go ahead and do a test with it. All right, and again, we will test it one more time just to try to get some consistency. Okay, so now we're on the Chester Cheetah. Now I have it set up in auto mode and it picked the 5G SA, which is standalone. And that's something that at least right now the T-Mobile gateways can't do. But um, the SA, if you have that rolled out, is typically really powerful so let's see what it does here okay very good so it actually picked the same server but you can see the second time around it is blazing fast 260 megabits per second all right let's switch it out to something new all right, so now we are on the Mofi 5500 and we have it set up in the auto settings where it picks all of its bands automatically. All right, we'll give it one more test just to try to make sure we don't get any flukes in here. All right, so not very good. But all right, so I did notice in the MoFi that it is doing NSA. So I'm actually going to try to get it to go and just do the, um, the SA. All right, so now I'll switch it over to 5G SA on this MoFi 5500. So we'll just see what um, difference that makes for it. Test one more time. I saw that it switched the uh, server, so I want to make sure I keep it on the T-Mobile Detroit server so we get consistently see there. Certainly, you can get different speeds from different ones. A lot of times, it's not drastically different, but just to try to maintain consistency, we'll keep it on the same one. All right, so now we're on the Peplink Max BR1, but I told it to do 5G SA. Looks like you got it on N71 5G SA, whereas the Chester Cheetah, it was doing a combined N25 and N41 SA. All right, so now I am back directly connected to the Sagemcom. So this is the T-Mobile gateway, that factory. I'm just doing, going back, you know, it's been an hour or something. And I just want to go back and check the speeds on the Sagemcom to make sure that we didn't see anything drastic from where it was before, which I think was a little over 100. Okay, so it looks like it did slow down some. We'll test it again just to uh, make sure. All right, for the most part, those results speak to themselves now. You know, there are a lot of variables and you can poke a lot of holes in my testing, which is fair. And I think that happens with anyone with cellular testing is it's going to vary a lot. And what I will admit is when you get to these third party gateways, the amount of variation has been higher than what I see in the stock gateways. And that's because of some of the additional carrier aggregation or other features as far as um, you know, the 5G SA is, is a big one. And so in this case, the Chester Cheetah was the only one that could get to do 5G SA with bands uh, N25 and N41. And it gave me double the speed, at least, you know, double the download speed of the next fastest device. But had I been able to get the InvisiGig to get there and connect on those, I think I would have probably got close to the same speed. To be honest with you and that's because from my testing um, in the past the Chester Cheetah on the same bands as say the Invisigig 
it's similar speed. The the Chester T typically was actually a little bit faster, but it, they're very close. Um, I would say it's probably a wash for a lot of those. So um, the reason I did not get the Invisigig to go there is because of the interface with that gateway. I really don't like it. It is very simple. Um, it's this, uh, you know, prompt command in, in a uh, website where you just type in different numbers, kind of like uh, MS-DOS. But it doesn't work on tablets, and that's how I really like to do all this testing. So I brought it back down here and plugged it in my computer to try to mess with it. And when I was going through them, uh, I did a reset, and then it lost its certificate for um, the authentication. And I, got, I gave up on it because it's such, it's such a pain for me to go in there and just change it from a 5G NSA or an auto mode and try to force it to do SA. Um, but I did go in there and force the MoFi and the Peplink uh, BR1 over to SA. The problem is both of them would only connect to the N71 5G SA. They would not hop on N25 and N41, which really are the bands you want to be on. So, you know, it's really interesting how all this stuff works. And some people are like, I want you to connect them to the exact same cell signal. And then I want you to tell me if this one on this specific band is faster or slower. And in general, I would say, you know, that's a terrible test. Because in, in a lot of ways, they should be very similar in speed if they're on the exact same, um, you know, cell signal from the same tower. You know, that's really testing maybe kind of their antennas out or, you know, perhaps their modems. But um, really, they're going to be limited by what their cell uh, signal and band that they're connected to. So really, the power of these devices is being able to pick up either more bands and do aggregation with it or be able to have the capability of having you select what um, band they connect to, like I did with the Chester Cheetah, where I can tell it to go in there and do the the 5g essay now it actually does that automatically in the auto mode it preferred going to those in 25 and 41 so i did not do band locking or anything to get it to go there but the other thing i do want to talk about a little bit is the ping you know the latency that is another big thing for folks and sa again is a big win there and it helps improve it you'll notice that none of my loaded pings are really good you know, I, I, I tend to have poor ping, and I'm not exactly sure why I have that. Um, it uh, must be something to do with my tower. I, it is a fiber backhaul. I've, I've checked it out to make sure it's not microwave backhaul, which can affect things like latency. But you can see I'm often at, you know, a second or more of loaded ping time now. But when you look at the 5G SA ones, it does drop down fairly significantly. And especially, I gotta give a shout out to the Peplink one because the Peplink on 5G SA was by far my best loaded ping out there. Um, so that's something to note there as well. The the MoFi 5500, you know, really was the underperformer, the underdog in this testing. It did not do well for speed um, in either the 5G NSA or the SA, nor did it do uh, great for the latency. You know, they, those are slow as well. So the MoFi has underperformed. I made sure it's on the latest um, uh, firmware on there. And then I've also, I, I know they do have um, now the new um, 520 uh, modem version out there, which should make it closer in uh, performance to the, um, the other units that I tested here today. But right now, Chester Cheetah still stays the king. I would love for my uh, me to get my hands on um, when they're outdoor units. It looks like they have a couple options. I have one of their older outdoor units. They used to call it they call it the bucket, but uh, I've seen a couple other ones that you know, really has me intrigued because today all my testing was just with the stock gateways with their antennas on it. I've also had the waveform uh, external uh, antennas hooked up to uh, many or most of these for testing. You can see those on my channel as well. But uh, another big win would be having a gateway directly outside, and that would be um, you know cool to uh, be able to test and see if there's an option out there that uh, kind of gives you everything. So thanks for watching. If you have questions, yes, please put them down below. 
If you want to bash my testing, you can do that too. It's okay. Um, but this is me testing those devices. Sorry, for the most part in auto mode and uh, up there in the same place, uh, which was my uh, third floor loft where they get the best signal and, uh, and just seeing what test uh, speeds you get out of them.